Is we are here for the finals of the Malmo Regional Championships here in Sweden. I am so excited that we're finally at the final stage. I'm Luke Romy and I am joined by Marcus Data once again. How are you feeling about that, this amazing final we're going to see? Yeah, as always, at the end of this tournament, everything like led towards this point. We've played seven rounds of Swiss yesterday. Mm -hmm. We've played a top eight cut today. And both of these players um, had yeah, remarkable games that we have already also seen on stream before. So, yeah, there is no doubt that both of these players are very, um, like, knowledgeable about what they're wanting to do with their team, that they can play well. And also, they probably had a little bit of time um, to think about what they wanted to do should they encounter um, each other again since they have already played in the Swiss rounds. But, yeah, we have Jamie Boyd and Ben Markham, both from... Both UK. Both from UK, <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, Team UK taking home this um, championships either way. But of course, um, yeah, the question is, will Jamie Boyd claim his third regional title or will Ben um, win his first one? I mean, Ben is a player in UK who I see quite a lot at all the local events. He's always very involved with the community there. And he's someone who is just a very solid player. I've had um, the pleasure of playing him myself. And if I remember correctly, it was just the board positioning switches he made were phenomenal. He just knows his team. He knows what he wants when he goes into a game. He has a strategy. And he's very good at working out what his opponent is going to do and try and adjust accordingly, which is, you know, a great trait that you're going to want to have in the final, particularly when you're against someone like Jamie Boy, who has every trick up his sleeve to encounter every situation. Exactly. Just in that... Last series of so Jamie, <laughs> uh, the icy wind of the Persian coming clutch really is stopping that Mega Tyranitar from really doing anything whatsoever. And we've also seen Ben overcoming the odds there. Um, not only was he able to win his top 8 game in a rematch, so he was already able to revenge like one of his two Swiss losses exactly. as he was one of the few players um, sneaking into that top 8 cut with a 5-2 and two record. But then in the top 4 also overcoming yet another Gothitelle team um, in Davide. So he has really shown that he can overcome the bad matchups. Another question is will he be able to also um, defeat Jamie to, and then claim his um, re first regional title? Exactly. I think it's quite interesting because um, Ben was X and 2 at the end of Swiss. And the two Swiss losses that he had, he is playing in top cut. Yes. So he played Nicole straight away again and, you know, managed to take all the information he learned from the Swiss and be able to get the victory there. But he's now playing Jamie Boyd, who was his other loss in Swiss. So both these players, not only have they maybe been able to scout out each other's teams just from being on stream and hearing reports, they also have actually played each other. So they know each other's play style against their team. They already know what the other opponent wants to lead during team preview. So that's a little bit more of a mind game going into this final. Do you have any idea what happened in their Swiss match? From what I was told, it was a Tapu Koko speed tie hmm. in game three. And that decided it all. So it that really definitely did. means that we're in for a close <laughs> match either way. Even though Jamie Boyd is undefeated so far in series, he was the first seed going into top cut. He was able to um, yeah, win the top eight and the top four. So now he's playing in the finals. Um, do you think that experience really like plays a factor in this match? Because we, as we were saying, Jamie Boyd, having played like a couple of regional finals already um, against Ben, who I don't think has been at any regional top cut even so far. I don't believe so. I know he's like done really well in the UK sort of circuit, but this is his first one on sort of I think the international stage, and particularly here in Sweden. He's made the effort to come over and travel. Now he's in the final against a fellow countryman. Like the pressure of that's always going to be you know, quite intense, but Ben is someone who is quite calm and collected, um, so I'm sure he'll be able to utilize sort of the experience he's gained and the confidence more than anything to go into this game. And you know, although he's already faced Jamie, they took it to a game three, so he knows that he has got the potential to beat him when the going gets tough. But just to give a quick recap on the teams, Jamie has got the Celesteela, Charizard, the Alolan Persian, Superior, Suicune, and Tapu Koko, whereas Ben has got the Tapu Koko, Tapu Bulu, Porygon 2, Metagross, the Araquanid, and Incineroar. Yeah, so um, looking at the matchup here, um, as you, are, you have already mentioned that both of these trainers chose to bring Tapu Koko at least to their third game in their Swiss encounter, uh, maybe one of them might want to um, avoid going into those dangerous speed <laughs> ties between the Tapu Koko again, um, but just looking at their teams, it seems to me that um, Jamie really has to focus a lot on that Charizard X if he wants to do a lot of damage, whereas for Ben, setting up Trick Room could be a key factor, and that's also what we're <laughs> going to see right off the bat here. Um, Jamie leading off with that Persian and Charizard combination that he has shown off a couple of times, whereas Ben is leading things off with his Incineroar and Porygon 2. Exactly. All the Pokemon you just mentioned there, Marcus, have jumped onto the stage in this final. And of course, Incineroar has the fake out pressure, but also so does Alolan Persian. So there's those sort of mind games going on. But if Ben wants to set up Trick Room, 
he does have access to a Pokemon, the Totem Araquanid that we've seen. And that would be an interesting Pokemon to bring in against something like the Charizard. Liquidation is going to be hitting really, really hard if he's able to get that Pokemon into that, that situation in Trick Room. Exactly. And so, as you were saying, before that, though, probably the best way or the best option for him would be to try and set up that Trick Room as soon as possible. Um, it looks like on Jamie's team, there's not really anything that can really, like, utilize the Trick Room. Like, all this Pokemon, like the Superior, the Persian, the Tapu Koko, and the Charizard are super fast. So, of course, Jamie just goes ahead and goes for a fake out here onto that Porygon 2 to prevent any sort of trick, uh, trick Room from coming up and switches into Suicune. Now, Suicune is a Pokemon that in previous years sometimes at least has carried Roar. I'm not sure if we've seen all of the moves on Jamie's um, I don't believe we Suicune have. yet, but he's one of those trainers who really liked using Roar in previous <laughs> formats, so I wouldn't be super surprised if that is what we're seeing here. Exactly, we've seen him be quite famous for using Roar on his Salamence, on Zapdos, on Suicune as well, I think, in the past. So I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if he is going to be running that on his Suicune, and that could be a really great option for him with that Porygon 2. As we saw from Turn 1, nothing really happened, they just exchanged fake outs, but he did manage to adjust his ball positioning. Persian how is however going on the offensive they're going to connect into the incineroar as Suicune just follows up with a scold so maybe he isn't running more and he is going to allow this um, porygon 2 to go for a trick room knock off powering off though from the incineroar which is going to knock the berry off that Suicune as yep. trick room does go up so Suicune now no longer has access to its health regaining berry yeah it's always like an interesting feeling seeing scald going into a fire type of course <laughs> on the one hand you think like oh it does so much damage because it's super effective but on the other side it also cannot burn so uh, Ben can like calculate things a little bit there. Now he does have the Trick Room set up. His Incineroar could probably go for um, another move into that Persian. Um, can't really do too much to the Suicune, but then another option for him would of course be to try and bring in that Totem Araquan as soon as possible, because I think that is going to be one of his main um, sweepers here, I would say, under Trick Room. And um, it has done so much work in the, um, in the, in the, at the very end of uh, Ben's top four game. So I wouldn't be surprised if Ben just went ahead and uh, maybe also it's like used U-turn to get his Incineroar out there. Instead, just going for another knockoff and hoping that this knockoff and Thunderbolt combination is enough to knock off the Suicune of Jamie, but it's Ooh, not. Oh, just survives. I mean, going for the knockoff again, just in case there might have been a switch coming in there. But Suicune able to survive both the doubling attacks there and will fire off a Snarl connecting on both the opposing Pokemon. Going to chip away at Incineroar and obviously lower the special attack of the opposing Porygon too. It's going to be another foul play coming out from the Alolan Persian, mm -hmm. and that's just going to chip away at Incineroar yeah, a little bit was, more. He was really thinking that maybe something like an Araquan it would come in there, but Fall Play actually doesn't do all too much damage to the Araquanid because, um, like, half of Araquanid's firepower comes from that water bubble ability. So, um, I think maybe Parting Shot could have been another option for Jamie just to get this Persian out of there. Um, so it could switch in later on to, for to fake out <laughs> exactly to, to stall out one more turn. But the Suicune surviving there could actually be big because, yeah, again, it's just like saving one more turn. Um, while this low kick is coming out on the Persian, doesn't really do much, and Ben seems to be like a little bit stuck here in a position with Incineroar and Porygon 2. Neither of them do a lot of damage. Of course, Jamie also doesn't make a lot of progress, but um, looks like this Incineroar might fall to the foul play right now. Oh, actually, targeting oh, no. down the Porygon. It goes into the Porygon too, but I think you're quite right there, Marcus. Ben is in a great position in terms of he's got the Trick Room up, and he's got two Pokemon that love to be in the Trick Room environment, but against the opposing Pokemon that Jamie had, Incineroar really can't do too much. Thankfully, it has the Assault Vest, so it was easily able to take the Scott coming yep. out there from the Suicune, but it was still heavily threatened by it. Obviously now Suicune has left the field, which now leaves Jamie free to bring in his Charizard. Again, another Pokemon that Ben can't really touch. Yeah, and really nice play there by Jamie, not going uh, for the KO on the Incineroar this time, thinking that, okay, uh, we're probably just staying in there and uh, waiting until I KO the Incineroar, so that then you can bring in the Araquanid. So now, though, um, as you were saying, that Incineroar can't really touch um, either the Charizard or the Persian, really. Like, it does have low kick, but that didn't do all too much um, to the Persian, despite being super effective. So nice play there by Jamie, just going for the foul play into the Porygon 2 and now getting a free switch into his Charizard. Charizard going for the Protector. You can see Jamie really wants to kind of stall out this Trick Room and make it sort of not a situation that Ben could utilize very strongly. It's going to be the uh, Recover coming up from the Porygon 2, though. It does want to regain as much health as it possibly can. A foul play coming up once again from the Alone and Persian. Going to keep going into that Porygon 2. Jamie just really wants to stall out this Trick Room. Yep, and now um, he's almost done it. So 
now I guess he could try and um, take the KO on the Incineroar, but at the same time he's not really worried about that Incineroar. Of course, whatever he Pokemon he has on the back, unless it is maybe that Tapu Koko, but he has two Pokemon potentially that could be weak to those fire type attacks in, uh, in um, Superior and Celesteela. So eventually, of course, he might want to get rid of that Incineroar, but so far it, it seems like he's really just fine having it stay on the field. However, now um, an important thing for the, at, for the end of this turn is at how much HP will this Porygon 2 be? Because of course, Ben would like to set up the Trick Room a second time. Of course he will, and it's going to be a really powerful Flare Blitz coming out from the opposing Incineroar. It's going to remove that Alolan Persian from the field, and in turn will KO itself due to recoil. The Charizard here, I mean, Porygon 2 just going for another recover, but is Charizard free to maybe set up a Dragon Dance so that it can be prepared for when Trick Room is over, that it will be in a dominant position. That's exactly what Charizard is going to go for. Going to boost its attack and its speed as well. So as soon as Trick Room's over, it can really threaten some of the Pokemon on Ben's team. You can see the Tapu Koko, the, even the Araquan, it's got Thunder Punch. Yeah, nice call there, and I think that that might indicate that his last Pokemon could indeed be the Tapu Koko because um, he wants to, of course, uh, have some sort of damage potential combination to knock out that Porygon 2. And if he had like the Celesteela, then he probably would have wanted to get off some more damage on the, the Porygon initially. But with that Tapu Koko having access to a very powerful Gigavolt Havoc, indeed. being based off that Wild Charge, as we have learned. Um, could be something that now with a double target, of course, uh, he could knock out the Porygon too. Also, seeing as Tapu Koko comes in for Ben, um, that's another one of those Pokemon that could be knocked out by um, like the boosted Flare Blitz here from Charizard. It's going to be the Thunder Punch boosted by Electric Terrain as well. So great pairing and synergy with Tapu Koko. They're going to go into the Porygon too, and it is going to be a Gigavolt Havoc. Such a strong Z move here coming off from Tapu Koko. But of course, both Jamie and Ben have the speed time Pokemon. Yes. Did you know which avatar that was? Ah, uh, I actually <laughs> didn't pay dress. attention, but I think it looked like it was Jamie's, maybe? Let's have a little look who it's firing off into. It's going to go right across the field into the Paragon 2. So it was Jamie Boy who won the speed tie off that Tapu Koko. And it, is it enough? It is enough to pick up the KO on that Porygon 2. So now we just have to see what Ben's Tapu Koko is going to go for. And it's going to yeah. be a Gigavolt Havoc in return. Ah, so Ben now is also down to his last two Pokemon, but let's see here what this Tapu Koko decides to target down. Um, either way, it is a Pokemon that will be um, resisting this Gigabyte Havoc, but yeah, as we were seeing times <laughs> and times again, um, it's just so uh, powerful in the electric terrain. So uh, let's see, you decided to target down the Tapu Koko off his oh, opponent, that's and this is would always crucial. an important role. Oh, but, but it does survive! It does survive! Okay. So took the Z-move and now um, Jamie Boyd still does have his boosted Charizard X that will outspeed the both Tapu Koko while Araquan is the last Pokemon for Ben so Jamie probably looking into some sort of uh, cross-targeting using his Tapu Koko to target down the Araquan of his opponent and having Charizard take down his opponent's Tapu Koko and it looks like Jamie Boyd somehow has managed to not only outstar the Trick Room but also outlast his opponent in the endgame. Exactly and that Gigavolt Habit doing so much damage to the Porygon too. We see the Totem Araquan on the field at the moment and I remember speaking to Ben about why have you picked the totem one? Is it just to terrify, <laughs> you know, any arachnophobics who have it across the table from you? But he said it's because it then can't be sky dropped. So that's an interesting yes. bit of information there coming in from Ben. See the protect coming out from Tapu Koko there. It's not going to be attack, um, take any damage from that flare blitz. And Wild Charge once again coming out and from the enough. Tapu Koko and it easily picks up the KO there thanks to the electric terrain. So it's now going to be Ben's Tapu Koko against this really speedy um, Charizard. Charizard. Yes, and so Tapu Koko of Jamie will go down, but of course not without knocking out Ben's Araquanid, <laughs> and that should be the end of the game as this Charizard X is boosted. Flabbit's already so powerful, should be an easy time knocking out the Tapu Koko, being the last Pokemon of his opponent, giving Jamie Boyd the win here in this first game, and as a, again, really well maneuvered um, game there by Jamie Boyd, keeping the Incineroar around when he had multiple opportunities to take it out, because he knew that if he gave his opponent that free switch in, um, the uh, Araquanid would come in and give, like, uh, throw out some liquidations that you really don't want to deal with. Instead though, the Incineroar, what did it use? Low kick on the Persian didn't do a lot, then knock off into Charizard's stuck. protects, even, like, that wouldn't have done too much either. And so, Jamie really just, like, like, taking things very slow, not taking the obvious KO that he could have taken, and Ben on the other hand probably always was like a little bit afraid of a potential switch, uh, like uh, of Jamie covering a potential switch with a strong attack, didn't want to switch in his rock on it, and so um, yeah, in the Maybe end Jamie a bit too conservative. able to win the game, yeah, I think um, for the second and potentially third game Ben needs to focus a little bit more about using the trick room turns that he has, because Jamie's team doesn't seem like it is built in a way that can actually prevent Trick Room from going up. So exactly, it's, it's not an environment he really likes. 
And, you know, I want to talk about Jamie's Tapu Coco as well. We saw that it's the Gigavolt Havoc variant, but one thing that's quite interesting, we sort of mentioned, you know, he's getting that from the Wild Charge, but we also saw on stream that Tapu Coco is also packing Thunderbolt. So he has the option of utilizing a Gigavolt Havoc yes. from either a physical or a special attacking perspective, and that can be really great depending on what Pokemon you want to KO. Because if it's a Pokemon that has a really high special defense, you're going to want to lock into the Wild Charge Gigavolt Havoc. And I think that's something really interesting on Jamie's team that just shows he takes a Pokemon that's really commonly used. Mm -hmm. we, we see a lot of Tapu Coco and a lot of electric yes. terrain in the games but he's taken it and really changed up the way that he's using it yeah certainly and that is something that jamie boyd is also known for just switching things up a little bit coming up with new ways of using pokemon and it looks like uh ben actually decided that he would want to go with the same lead here as we have the incineroar and the porygon too so both players shaking hand here right before the second game and jamie boyd only one win away from winning the Malmö Regional Championships, <laughs> claiming his third regional title. Wow, that is a number that That's um, incredible. only, I think, one more person um, has in Europe. So he could tie there um, with Joseph Richardson, I believe, for yes. the most regional wins if he was able to overcome his fellow UK player in Ben. It so just shows the caliber of player that he is. And he's in this situation now. He's one game up facing you know, the same lead against Ben. And if you're Ben in this position, you are one game down, but you have just got to pull everything that you have learned throughout this tournament, everything you've practiced, and apply it to the game. We're going to just see straight off the bat a really offensive play from Jamie Boy. He goes for the fake out with the Lowland Persian into the opposing Incineral, so it cannot do any fake out trades like we saw in game one. And that Tapu Coco is going to activate its Electrium Z. Go for the Gigavolt Havoc. Who do you think this is going into, Marcus? Uh, this could probably be targeted into the Porygon just to like put on a lot of pressure on it. Uh, but no, this time around it decides Jamie wants to uh, just take out the Incineroar because, of course, if Porygon sets up the Trick Room, then it could recover all the damage anyway. And um, this makes me believe that maybe he's switched something up about um, his Pokemon that he brought in the back, though, because getting rid of that Incineroar was um, like on his priority list. I couldn't find it in the first game at all. <laughs> so this time around, he really aggressively targets down that Pokemon, maybe expecting his opponent to have switched things up a little bit, because now with Tabu Bulu coming in, imagine if Jamie Boyd has that um, Celesteela in the back, potentially, after um, thinking that, ah, oh, my opponent actually doesn't really have a lot. If I can take out the Incineroar, which... Um, was like delivered to him on a silver plate in the first game. He could exactly. have taken that knockout any day. And then if once the Incineroar is down, there's only that Tapu Coco. But seeing as how Ben wants to focus more on Trick Room in the second game, it looks like he might have not brought the Tapu Coco and instead has the Araquanid as his fourth Pokemon. That making like would make that Celesteela a very, very um, big threat for Jamie. It's certainly with us exactly what we're seeing here. Both Tapu Bulu and Araquanid on the field for Ben. And as you said there, Marcus, Celesteela is coming in for Jamie. He did have that in the back, which is going to apply huge pressure pressure against Ben's team. Woodhammer going to power out such a strong attack in the grassy terrain, going to easily pick up the KO on that Alolan Persian. But now that Celesteela is on the field, Ben really has to rethink things here. He's gone really hard on the Trick Room mode in this game. He wants to get Trick Room up, and instead of, you know, wasting the turns like he did in the first game, yes. he wants to be hitting hard. Liquidation, Woodhammer, he's in his dominant terrain, but or so he was. Now, <laughs> the terrain is gone, and we're seeing something that we haven't seen in all the stream games on Jamie Boyd, I think. Celesteela's item finally <laughs> activating that electric seed, now boosting Celesteela's defense against two physical attackers, and I'm not sure if we have talked about it before, but acrobatics that would be Very such strong. a huge move here if the Celesteela carried it because hitting both the Tapu Bulu that it can hit um, super effectively of course with Heavy Slam anyway but also the Araqua need for super effective damage and Celesteela now in a prime position it has the defense boosted it looks to be in such a solid spot here and Jamie Boyd really reading what Ben was going to do here in the second game exactly that Celesteela as you mentioned earlier got the electricity he's now got the acrobatics it can just target down on Tapu Bulu and Araqua there's not much Ben can do is both Tapu Bulu and Araqua are very big physical attackers. It's got the defense boost. And that said, it doesn't really care about taking a few wood hammers, particularly out of terrain, or even a few liquidations. No. But Tapu Bulu is going to retreat right back to Ben. It's going to be that Porygon too. Again, a Pokemon that can't really touch Celesteela, particularly when it gets a few Leech Seeds up in its favor. Download boost, however, will be boosting the special attacks. Porygon 2 will be quite happy with that. Celesteela, however, wants to protect him, maybe scout out what Ben is going to do. And then Tapu Coco going to protect also. I mean, it's heavily pressuring that Araquanid, yeah, but due the, to Trick Room. Yeah, there's still the Z-move. Um, it's still a potential, and that is what we're seeing. That's exactly so what we're seeing. Jamie Boyd on top of his reads once again, and Ben really wanted to make a big KO here probably with this Hydro Vortex, but unfortunately for him, uh, will be hitting into a Protect. 
it will. And I'm not going to lie, it's one of the most terrifying animations. A spider in a whirlpool. A big spider. <laughs> you don't really want to be coming down against this. But it's going to go into that Tapu Koko. So a great call there from Jamie Boy. Still going to do some good damage as the water bubble ability is so powerful. Boosting the water type moves on that Araquanid. But Tapu Koko is here to stay another turn. Particularly in this Trick Room environment, he might want to get it out. But it's still applying great pressure against that Araquanid. Yeah, and once again, I can't stress um, enough how genius that was of Jamie Boy. In the first game, he really, like... He tricked his opponent into thinking that um, that Incineroar isn't important at all. And Ben was probably also thinking like, oh yeah, like Incineroar, yeah, that didn't do anything in the first game. So he kind of like just threw it away there turn one. But of course oh, Porygon is one more option that Ben has to deal with that Celesteela in electric terrain. But oh, if this um, Acrobatics would have KO'd the Araquanid of his opponent, um, then... Ben would have been forced to reset the terrain, but actually, yeah, with that Porygon 2, it's thought about being terrain. so powerful. Yeah, that could st still swing the game into Ben's favor. I think Porygon 2, like, I, you know, I think he was a little bit offended when I said there's not much he can do against <laughs> Celesteela. Boosted by the terrain, of course, and of course the download boost that gave him the special attack. Celesteela, we've seen that it got the defense boost from the Electric Seed, but it needs to be able to maybe pick up some beast boost so that it can boost its special defense that I believe Jamie is running on that Celesteela. Charizard, however, is now in play, so it's going to, I'm assuming, maybe Mega Revolve up, get into the Charizard X form and start dealing out some damage, but it's still facing down Araquanid with a very powerful liquidation. Yeah, and now Jamie really is like with his back <laughs> against the wall all of a sudden. He has only two Pokemon left. He can't switch anymore. Now he has to actually outstall the Trick Room. He could try and protect his Celesteela and use his Charizard X to take out that Araquanid, for example, but then he still needs to find a way to deal with that Porygon. And um, we are seeing the Protect from Celesteela. What is Charizard going to do? Will it try to attempt getting a knockout this turn? It looks like it will. It could also potentially go for that Dragon Dance for until after Trick Room, but yeah, it is actually able to take this liquidation, but Ben, ben making the read into there. It. Ben making a great call, but it just survives. The Charizard surviving on 7 HP, able to get up a Dragon Dance. And I'm sure it's going to want to be in this position as soon as Trick Room ends. But great call there from Ben. The Celesteela going for the Protect, but Ben doubling into the Charizard. That was such a huge threat against him. But now Trick Room's over. He's got a Dragon Dance up. Jamie is in the dominant seat at the moment. Yeah. But the problem is that now Jamie would need to try and prevent Trick Room from going up again, and he can only do that by uh, doubling up into the Porygon with, for example, Acrobatics and Flablets. But Flablets would then, yeah, exactly, would KO the Charizard. So I don't think that he has what it takes to deal with all the threats on the board. The Araqua need, he needs to devote a move to take that out, but then the Porygon 2 will be free to set up Trick Room again. And seeing how much that Thunderbolt did to the Celesteela, I don't think that Celesteela has any chance of winning the 1v1 encounter there. So let's see here. Acrobatics coming out into that Araquanid while Charizard is protecting itself. But if Porygon set up the Trick Room, um, it would be easy for Ben to take the knockout on Charizard. The only way here for, for Jamie to win would be if that Porygon, for some reason, targeted down that Charizard. But that is not happening. Thunderbolt coming out into the Celesteela, getting the KO, and Jamie Boyd is down to his last Pokemon. Exactly. That Celesteela that we were saying was going to be so bulky and be able to go through Ben's team has been KO'd by the little Porygon too. So now it is the Charizard against the Tapu Bulu and the Porygon 2. Yeah, and um, of course Tapu Bulu, not a particularly good matchup for, um, it, for the, against the Charizard, but at this HP range it doesn't really matter. Um, Trick Room is not set up, but that doesn't matter either because Porygon will be able to just get the clean knockout here and Charizard's strongest move, Jamie deciding to finish things off in style, just wanted to see how much damage that would have done to the Porygon. Maybe if a combination of Flablets and Acrobatics is enough um, to KO that Porygon at a plus one stage of attack on the Charizard, but it will also, of course, um, make his Charizard faint, and we are going into a game three. It's gonna be ben a game three. Somehow was able to pull things back after it looked very grim for him, but that Porygon 2 being so powerful with the download boost and in the electric terrain, yeah, that Thunderbolt did so much damage. I will never underestimate a Porygon 2 ever again. That was so strong. It did almost about 60% to that Celesteela straight off the bat with one Thunderbolt. And I think, you know, if you're Jamie in the situation, he was in a really great position going straight on the offensive, and yes, he managed to get all the, some good KOs at the beginning, but Ben went so hard on that Trick Room. He knew what he wanted to do, and he just managed to apply that strategy so well. Yeah, and it looks like, um, as we were saying, looking into team preview, it looks like there's only Incineroar and Tapu Koko that can deal with the Celesteela, but it turns out that the Porygon 2 can do the same thing. It can do it too. <laughs> so I really doubt that Jamie wants to try and go with the same strategy of, like, 
um, KOing all the counters for Celestila once again because while it was such an offensive threat against the Tapabulu and the Iraqonet of his opponent, defensively all of a sudden it wasn't able to back things up and so um, yeah it's really really tough for Jamie because Ben's trick room mode um, still seems to be a little bit uncontested in the first game he wasn't able to pull things off um, like completely because of the fact that um, his incinerator was stuck on the field for too long but then in the second game bringing Tapabulu and Iraqonet next to each other and then the Porygon 2 when it really counted really really um, yeah, playing well there on the trick room, and Jamie needs to come up with a way to either like stall out the turns a little bit better or to set up like another win condition like that Celestila. Exactly, and I would be so surprised if Jamie wasn't running raw on his Suicune, but it does appear like that isn't an option for him. But it would have been a great play for him to have that Suicune in there. Yep. He's, you know, he loves bringing that to the front of the field. And if he can raw away the Porygon 2, maybe then bring in something for maybe the partner Charizard X to be really dominant and be able to pick up a KO nice and easy. But he does have to worry about fake out games as well. It's going to be the Persian Tapu Koko lead for Jamie Boyd once again. And we see um, <laughs> um, the Porygon 2 and the Incinera once again for Ben. So both these players know what they want to do. This is probably, I mean, this is their sixth the game they faced in the Malmo yep. Regional Championships but game three here for the title everything is on the line yeah everything is on the line go of course and tell your friends that this is going on is Jamie Boyd able to claim his third regional title or will Ben win his first one so now of course once again um, the fake out mind games are in place Jamie could just go for the same play again, eliminate Incineroar from play on turn one, but in the second game, while he was able to get the first KO relatively quickly, he wasn't able to follow things up, unfortunately, as Ben's Porygon 2 proving to be so powerful, so another option for him would be to like try and fake out the Porygon again and maybe switch out the Tapu Koko to re... Um, set stuff a little bit but it looks like he's committing to the incineroar play once again and really wants to get rid of that pokemon as soon as possible exactly he's going for what he did in game two fake out into the incineroar and i believe it will be followed up by one of these powerful gigavolt havocs interesting enough he didn't go for a fake out on the porygon too so if that is what ben has opted to go for trick room will be up in play leaving ben free to be able to bring in another pokemon once this incineroar is ko'd that's exactly the pokemon he's targeted down yeah and that was a kind of a risky play here by jamie putting like a uh, all his eggs into one basket because if that type of Bulu switched in, that could have soaked up the um, the, the Z move mm -hmm. easily, and then in Trick Room really would have threatened both the Persian and the type of Coco. So Jamie, once again thinking that hey, like there is so much on the line here for my opponent, he's not going to just like switch in Trick Room because if I go for the fake out into the Porygon and target it down with another move, then maybe um, it, you could take it out with the Z move later on but actually with that grassy terrain yeah, I definitely think that could have been one option here for Ben to try and like just switch in his Tabu Bulu um, because then that also would have helped the Porygon uh, with the with the recovery at the end of the turn even if Jamie mm -hmm. committed to a play against that Pokemon but now of course he has his trick room set up guaranteed and is able to switch in the Tabu Bulu for free so now we're in like a similar situation exactly and I think if you were Ben you may have realized that you know trick room really isn't something Boyd wants to be up against so why would you let the Porygon 2 get trick room up if I was Ben I would have thought that's something he definitely didn't want to do so maybe he thought his Incineroar was f you know, safe in that particular turn one, but it turns out Jamie went for the exact same strategy. Ben, however, doing exactly what we saw in game two, brings in the Araquanid. So Tapu Bulu and Araquanid and Celesteela once more are all on the field in Trick Room and Grassy Terrain. Tapu Koko going for the Protect, though, doesn't want to take any damage from potentially a Wood okay. Hammer or some powerful damage from Tapu Bulu, but instead it's going to be a Horn Leech. Going into the Protect, though, so not dealing any damage, and this is now the state of play in Trick Room with quite a few slow Pokemon here. Yeah, Jamie didn't want to commit to a play here. He didn't want to commit to predicting which slot the Tapu Bulu was going to target or else he could have gone for a parting shot with his Persian um, after that Tapu Bulu hit into the protective Tapu Koko. So he really wants to keep all his four Pokemon around. He was able to claim the Pokemon advantage early on um, after taking out that Incineroar and once again he, he is going with that Celesteela. So yeah, now seeing that Jamie did indeed bring the Celesteela once again, it seems like switching in the Tapu Bulu in turn one for Ben is really something that uh, could have like changed things significantly but now of course Ben does have his Araquanid and the Tapu Bulu under Trick Room. This is the situation he wants to be in. Jamie cannot activate the Electric Seed on a Celesteela this turn so Acrobatics won't be as powerful. However, Heavy Slam of course would still deal a lot of damage to that um, to that Tapu Bulu. Exactly, Tapu Bulu does not want to take a Heavy Slam. Instead Celesteela is going to protect, doesn't want to take deal any moves out until it can maybe get Electric Terrain back in play. 
but a liquidation will come out from the Araquanid and obviously when is the protect there but a wood hammer will be taken by the Alolan Persian will be enough to pick up the KO but this does give Jamie a free chance to bring his Tapu Koko back in although not a speedy Pokemon it will activate that electric mm -hmm. seed which Set of Steeler could really use against both these Pokemon yeah this time around Ben did not use its Z, his Z move into a protect though so he still has that available to him and at the same time if Persian somehow made it through the turn that could have been a big opportunity for Jamie to go for a fake out next turn use an attack with Set of Steeler stall at the trick room pretty easily but now he's kind of forced to switch in his Tapu Koko again to activate that electric seed to get rid of the grassy terrain but Tapu Koko in, tr in Trick Room is never something you really want to have unless it's one of those weird situations if you're playing against Baz and he has like his speed boosted jinx and yeah, that's not <laughs> so happening scarf, tapu <laughs> yeah that's not happening around here so Ben still needs to really use his turns of Trick Room we can't keep stressing on how important that is for him but he, he could get a KO on the Tapu Koko this turn if it didn't protect but at the same time Celesteela now with the defense boost seems to be so difficult for him to take down once again however as we know Porygon 2 is already waiting in the back for him exactly and Por Porygon 2 was such a problem for Jamie I mean if the Araquanid did want to go for something like the Hydro Vortex into that Tapu Koko slot we have yet to see what Jamie's fourth and final Pokemon is I believe so he could switch in something like the Suicune here but instead just gonna go for a Protect and I wonder if Ben has predicted that it is gonna be a Z move coming out of course it's the Hydro Vortex now will this be going into the Tapu Koko's Protect or will he just want to chunk some damage into that set of Steeler? yeah Jamie just alternated Protects between <laughs> turns like the last three turns he just always used protect with any pokemon that could use it and i have to question whether that strategy is going to be enough and yeah ben is actually reading into this protect now targeting down the celesteela with hydro vortex he, it has oh, the it boosted huge defense amount. but that it still did so much damage and he really committed with the z move he already was able to win a game where his, it's, his z move didn't land but this time around he was able to find the right target Tapu Bulu will go down, Celesteela will get another Beast Boost, or will get the first Beast Boost, I should say, to um, add to that um, Defense Boost from the Electric Seed, but Ben now being down to his last two Pokemon, he still has that Porygon 2 around, it's still super healthy, so he can try and set up um, Trick Room a second time here for that Araquanid, and it's going to be tough for Jamie to overcome that. Exactly, Porygon 2 again in Electric Terrain now is going to be threatening that Celesteela, it got an Attack Boost rather than Special Attack, so it won't be dealing as much damage, but looking at the health that Celesteela's on, it yep. doesn't have you know leftovers it hasn't set up any leech seeds at this point so a thunderbolt will be doing a huge amount of damage and might even be enough to pick up the ko uh, at this, this is, range yeah this is really important now because this is the last turn of trick room and if jamie just protected his celesteela once again things could get really dicey for him will ben call the <gasps> moves correctly or will he double up into the top of coco thunderbolt is going it's into the going top of coco and Tapu jamie called it so his celesteela will be able to potentially knock out that rock we need with acrobatics however I think we have seen in a previous game that our didn't Edwin quite was able enough. to take the attack and, and just survives I mean that was crazy from Jamie there you know not going for the protection and Celesteela able to get some damage off at the you know the loss of his Tapu Koko and but Charizard now got the is Charizard the last in play. Pokemon for Jamie so now Trick Room is over but it looks like there's no way for Jamie to prevent a protect and trick room play. That's like one of the most basic plays. But if you do not have Taunt, if you don't have like Roar, I mean, it wouldn't really work anymore because <laughs> Ben is down to his last two Pokemon. But if you don't have anything to stop that Porygon from setting up trick room, it's usually going for it. So I'm really expecting a protect and trick room from Ben. And now Jamie is like, the question is, can he even do anything about that? He could, of course, try to go for a Leech Seed into the Porygon and attack into the Porygon as well. But he might be forced to rely on something like a critical hit. Maybe he has to go for something like flabbits and acrobatics into the Porygon, hoping that one of the attacks would get the critical hit here. Let's see there. Well, Araquanid the coming out from Araquanid, just like you said, and I will not be surprised at all if it is going to be a Trick Room. Thunder Punch, though, coming out from the Charizard, so it's just going to attack into that Porygon to That's try and get enough. a little bit of damage. And it is the Leech Ooh. Seed, so he's going to get a little bit of health back on the Celesteela, can maybe protect the next turn and get a little bit more, but Trick Room is up, and that Araquanid versus a Charizard X. I mean, we saw a liquidation did maybe just about half, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be able to take more than one. And, you know, Araquanid in Trick Room, you've got to be scared of that. Yeah, so Jamie says that, okay, um, I could try and go for for excuse me for the Flablets and Acrobatics, but even maybe a critical hit wouldn't be enough. So he's going for the Thunder Punch instead. Uh, not quite as powerful, but in the Electric Terrain, also boosted, so dealing a significant damage. Also with the chance, the chance to Paralysis. He didn't get it this time around, but also then going for the Leech Seed, saying that, Okay, Trick Room is going up, I know what you're doing, and he <laughs> thinks that he might still have some outs here, even if Trick Room is up. So, now the question is, will his Celesteela protect? Will Ben maybe try to double up into the Charizard, expecting a protect here, but then, on the, at the same time, would the Porygon be able to somehow overcome both the Celesteela and the Charizard? So, 
this turn could really decide the championship here. Well, if Jamie didn't protect Celestila and if Ben targeted it, that would probably be the end. We are actually seeing it's Charizard. The from Charizard. Here. Jamie went down to four seconds remaining on his time to pick his moves. He was really thinking it through. Liquidation, though, from the Araquanid goes into the Charizard. And he doubled and up, he into, doubled up into that slot. Great protect there from Jamie. So acrobatics will come off from that Celestila. Going to pick up the KO on Araquanid. And now, thanks to that one protect, you can see Ben shaking his oh, head. Oh, what a play. That was incredible. Celestila gets the beast boost, and now you have Charizard versus uh, with Celesteela versus a Porygon 2 that is leech seeded and all of a sudden Jamie getting two beast boost with a Celesteela maybe it is now able to take one of those powerful Thunderbolts and it all of a sudden looks like Jamie somehow pulled it back even though the trick room is up even though Porygon 2 will be really difficult for Jamie to take down he did get the leech seed down he still has the Charizard at full health and that was probably the game deciding turn Ben we see knows forfeit. it he forfeits <laughs> And Jamie Boyd is your 2018 Malmo Regional Champion. Wow, three times the charm. Oh, I have wow. done it at the World Championships, but Jamie Boyd <laughs> is your Regional Champion. Oh, what a serious, with a team that seemingly didn't have any good answer to Trick Room, he somehow still pulls it. He still had a strategy against it. And I mean, that was just an explosive set as well. And right there, it came down to the wire because both players were in a great position and it really did just come down to what call Ben was going to make and what one Boyd was going to make. Yeah, I really, would wanna, I really would want to see uh, Jamie's face right now just to see how they're in, if we can maybe go over there. Yeah, there, there he's sitting, Handshake shaking floor. a couple of hands. And Ben at the same time, he has to be happy with how he played he played well sometimes it's just down to those calls to making those calls and they're still discussing the game of course because i mean i guess jamie knows kind of what was going going through his opponent's mind there um it seems so obvious to go for the protect with the celesteela then charizard takes the liquidation <laughs> takes out the um takes out the iraq when it maybe but even then potentially um the Porygon could have somehow pull it back but in the end yeah jamie makes the perfect play makes the call and gets things right and he is going to be your regional champion i mean if you wanted an explosive final that certainly was one we saw some incredible caliber play as well like as you sort of said that ben had the trick room strategy jamie didn't really have any answers for it but to show his maneuverability and the flexibility of his team as well to be able to work around the strategy ben was going for was just incredible and obviously he got game one game two ben was able to claw it back and you know really just take on Jamie's team and then that game three it was just an amazing ending there and you know Celesteela once again is a reigning champion yeah Celesteela is just powerful you can never <laughs> underestimate that Pokemon of VGC 17 of VGC 18 yes with uh, electric seed and acrobatics this time around co accompanied by a wild charge type of Coco yeah yeah, what an exciting ending to this tournament. And Jamie Boyd, I can't stress it enough. He played so well. He did went undefeated in Swiss. Went undefeated in Top Cut, of course. Like, dropping some games here and there, of course. But against strong players like Ben, that can happen here and there. It's an information game after all. And Jamie really coming up with that Celesteela strategy for the second game. It didn't quite work, but then he pulled it off in the third game. And that is really, that is really like one true sign of a champion. You Like, realizing that even though... He did win the first game, lost the second game, that the strategy that he was trying to pull off in the second game was probably what gave him the best chance to win the championship. That is what happened. And, um, wow, once again, congratulations to Jamie Boyd that we will, of course, be seeing in an interview in just a bit. Yeah, we will be joining Jamie for an interview very shortly. And as well, just... A big shout out to Ben as well. He's yes. come here, got to second place, but also he's going to be someone to really watch in this format, I think. He's really well versed with that team, and I've seen him use a different kind of Pokemon as well. So it'll be interesting to see what he's going to apply going forward. And I think he is planning to attend a few other regionals mm -hmm. throughout Europe throughout the rest of the season. So you never know. We'll probably see him in a final very, very soon. But I'm going to go calm down. I'm going to leave yes. you to do the interview with Jamie. <laughs> but hopefully you guys were excited as we were to watch that game. And congratulations once again to Jamie. Yeah, so don't go anywhere and we will be right back.
and we are back one last and final time. I am here with now three-time regional <laughs> champion Jamie Boyd. First of all, of course, congratulations. Thank you. How do you feel in this moment? Brilliant. Like, I finally matched Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, it, it's, it's fantastic. That was a, that was a brilliant set. Like, it, even if I wasn't playing, I'd have really enjoyed that final. That was a fantastic set. Definitely. And um, before I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, um, of course, I want to hand over some of the prizes that you will receive for your first place finish. So we got some cards, of course. Have fun with those. And then, of course, this super nice new champion mat that, that is, is nice flipped one. now, but it still looks pretty nice. I'm sure you can make good use of that or maybe... Give it to your brother. Maybe my little brother's Yeah, them. yeah. <laughs> and then the most important thing, of course, you have a couple of those already, but I'm going to give it to you anyway, of course. Thank Congratulations you. for this win here at the Malmö Regional Champion trip. So, you're a three-time regional champion now. I don't really want to bother you with any more <laughs> in-game questions, but just a couple of them. So, your team didn't seem to have like one specific way of dealing with a hard trick room mode that Ben had on his team. Were you confident going up against a matchup like that? You have played him in Swiss before, and did you just rely on trying to read where his attacks were going to go, or what was your general approach yeah, to the matchup like that? My approach with that trick room is like I, I can out-position it and stall it out, because I've got the parting shots and the fake-outs that help me stall it out, and um, if they're special attacks, I can snarl them. So I, 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 based, I try and out-position trick room. I, I, I let it go up, because mm -hmm. I, have, I have taunt on my superior, but yes. I didn't think superior was very good for that match. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I, I just... I, Outside of the superior, I have no way of stopping trick room. Yes. Uh, I guess fake out. So yeah, I just let it happen mm -hmm. and try and out position. Yeah, and I was uh, thinking about that again. But actually, in that final, I don't think you used like you didn't use snarl a single time. You also didn't use parting shot because you were probably always afraid that hey, if he reads where my parting shot is going to go, then um, like and you protect one Pokemon go for the parting shot. So instead, you like protect the Tabu Coco, switch in the Celesteela, just so that yeah. even if he caught the protect and went for the Motor Hammer, it wouldn't do too much damage. So in the first game, um, some like. Through most of the game, it looked like he was in control. He had his trick room set up, but then in the end, um, your Charizard X um, set up, and you were able yes. with with the Tabu Coco and the Charizard to take the game. Then, what made you change things up for the second game? Because I th I thought he would adapt, uh, adapt to it. Like it, it seemed I seemed to be able to stall out trick room pretty well. Mm -hmm. I was um, foul playing that I was ignoring the Incineroar yes. apart from foul plays to cover an Arachnid switching because that would have been uh, a bit bad. But like. The Incineroar wasn't threatening too much, so I was able to leave on the field and stall out the Trick Room with just the Incineroar and the Porygons. So um, that let me get my Dragon Lance on the final turn, which mm -hmm. which was really nice. But the Bulu adaptation was was pretty good for him. Yes, one shot in my Persian as well. Like I I, I was aware he was life orb, but that's so I, I, I guess because I I'm I'm pretty um, defensively built rather than specially defensive with the Persian. It's, it's mostly in HP rather than the special defense. So I thought maybe, but mm. no. Yeah. <laughs> so, so don't underestimate Bulu. Yeah, so he did make that adaption. And um, even though it seemed like that Celesteela was in such a prime position, like I was really praising you for the play on turn one in game two, just going for the fake out and Z move into the Incineroar because in his eyes after the first game, he must have thought, oh, Incineroar didn't really do anything. Yes. I kind of want to like get it off the field. So yeah, I don't mind it yeah, going I, down. I, I was planning to win with Celesteela in game two and that didn't happen because Thunderbolts were doing a bit too much, especially in my own electric terrain. But yeah. Yeah, yeah well. but you need to, you need the terrain to um, to activate the seed, of course, yes, and then yeah. things just like fell apart somehow with that Polygon 2 just being so powerful. But then for the third game, you decided to go with the same Pokemon again, like the same plan essentially, trying to set up that Celesteela and win with it. What made you like choose that plan over trying to play it a little bit similarly to how the first game went? Well, I think game two would have been all right because if I'd have got the Celesteela switch on the Persian w Wood Hammer in game two, I'd have been fine. But I played it. I, I, was a mu much more cautious because I was switching and protecting rather than switching and attacking, mm -hmm. um, so I could yes. get the position correctly. Um, yeah, and and what, like the double into the Charizard um, at the end as well. Like he, yeah. got, he got that in game two, and then I thought like you've got those mind games, but you're always going to go for it again because you, mm -hmm. the opponent's always going to think that you're going to switch. So and that's that's why as he moved the Incineroar twice as well because yes. like he had, like. In game three, like game two, my plan was okay. There's an Incineroar. I'm going to kill it for Celesteela. Mm -hmm. um, game three, he's got his Bulu switching in. Yeah, he knows that I've got his Bulu switching in, so he's going to leave Incineroar in. So. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about that because I think like you don't have like 
if something super hard to punish the Bulu switch in. Yeah. So you would like r really need to rely on reads, like maybe going for a parting shot initially already. Yes, yeah. And so things could get kind of dicey, but he decided to um, just, as you were saying, like sometimes it's really like about risk and reward. And if he calls that correctly, gets up the trick room, everything's super fine for him. He keeps the incinerator, everything's good. But if you call it correctly, he still has fighting chances, just like we saw in the second game where he was able to um, yeah, win in the end. But so yeah, you already mentioned that Charizard play. Um, sometimes it seemed like you were um, like not trying to rush things too much, but you were like one of the few players that we saw play on stream that was really always taking the time. Sometimes even coming close to like timing out on your time. Yeah. Is that something you try to like that you have um, like from your experience, knowing when you can afford to take your time? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Like I, I, I feel like I'm a fairly read-heavy person, so you don't want to make a read within five seconds. Mm -hmm. So. Like I, I, I played um, positionally as well where I, I can play defensively, but yeah, like because I'm, I, I do feel like I'm quite an offensive player. I do need to make sure if I'm taking a risk, it is worth the rewards. So, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Wise words coming out here from Jamie. And then, of course, besides the game, now we already talked about the fact that this was your third regional championships. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask you, like, how did you like your experience in the Oceania Internationals? Because you were using the same team. Of yes, course, yeah. you went undefeated here. Um, how did things go there? And what do you think was the reason that it, things went a little bit differently for you well, here? I, I got bodied by Ally Switch on stream in Oceania. <laughs> um, that wasn't too good. And then um, my next round, I got um, Scarf Rockslid. So that oh, okay. didn't go so well. Um, but yeah, like, like a bit disappointing in Sydney. I, I was I was content with my play. Um, mm -hmm. There was a like just a, a couple of plays out throughout the whole of Swiss that I regret, but like, I was I was content with it, and, and I'm I'm pretty happy with my play here as well. So yeah, yeah I mean, even if you weren't in the end winning the entire tournament, isn't too bad either, yeah. you know. So. <laughs> of course. So now, um, also, you're in a prime position in terms of championship points now, leading yes. towards the World Championship. Um, what is there left? What can we expect from you in the up in this season? Um, which tournaments do you plan on attending? Uh, I'm for sure going to Sheffield. Uh, Stuttgart, the regional there, is very, very likely. Mm -hmm. uh, Prague is probable. And okay. um, I'm also looking at Ohio as well. Um, Brazil probably won't be happening. But okay. So I, I've got my own Ohio because my exams would have finished by then, so I'd have the time for that. So. Solid stuff. So still a lot of Pokemon coming up and um, yeah, by the end of the season maybe we'll find you at the very top of the uh, CP rankings so once I think, again. I think I'm 7th seventh seventh? in Europe, which is a shame that the Brazil cutoff was three days ago, yeah. but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, of course, um, yeah, looking forward to um, seeing more from you in future events. And yeah, guys, I think that is going to be it from us here in Malmö. I hope you enjoyed the coverage. We crowned our champion. Um, yeah, I also kind of want to get Lou and Barish into the picture once again, just so they can wave goodbye. Uh, yeah, this was our first attempt at a grassroots regional stream like this, so I hope you enjoyed what we were doing. Um, of course, if you have any feedback, you can uh, forward that to us anywhere. And um, yeah, I don't think there's anything left we need to say. The TCG action is still going on. There's the St. Louis Regional that is also happening today with the top cut. So yeah, still a lot more Pokemon for you guys to watch at home. And yeah, this is it from us here. Have a good day, see you, and bye-bye.